In this clinical overview, we're focusing on Brugada syndrome. It's a genetic condition that poses a risk of sudden cardiac death, often in individuals who appear healthy and have structurally normal hearts. So what exactly is Brugada syndrome? It's a primary electrical disease of the heart. What makes it so insidious is that it affects people whose hearts look completely normal on standard imaging, yet they carry this high risk for life-threatening arrhythmias. Okay, let's begin with the core of the problem, the underlying electrical malfunction in Brugada syndrome. The root cause is a defect in the heart's ion channels. These channels manage the flow of electrical charge across the heart cells. And when they don't work correctly, the entire electrical signaling process is disrupted, leaving the heart vulnerable to dangerous, chaotic rhythms. This leads to two particularly concerning arrhythmias. First, polymorphic ventricular tachycardia, or VT. This rhythm can quickly spiral into the second and more fatal one, ventricular fibrillation, or VF. VF is what causes sudden cardiac death, because the heart's lower chambers just quiver instead of pumping blood. Now that we have the basic mechanism, let's talk about how we identify Brugada syndrome, focusing on its unique electrocardiogram patterns and its genetic basis. The key diagnostic feature is the type 1 Brugada pattern on an electrocardiogram, or ECG. You'll see a distinct, coved ST segment elevation of at least 2 millimeters, specifically in leads V1 and V2. A major challenge here is that this pattern can be transient, so it might not always be present on a random ECG. From a genetic perspective, the most common culprit is a mutation in the SCN5A gene. This gene is responsible for building a key part of the cardiac sodium channel, which is essential for initiating the heart's electrical impulse. A defect here throws off the entire sequence. Inheritance is typically autosomal dominant. This means if a parent has the condition, each of their children has a 50% chance of inheriting the mutated gene. And while it's most often inherited, that's not the whole story. Spontaneous mutations with no family history account for 20 to 30% of all cases. So this syndrome can appear in any family. So how does this actually present in a patient? Let's move on to the clinical symptoms in the process for diagnosis. One of the most difficult aspects of Brugada syndrome is that many individuals are completely asymptomatic. When symptoms do appear, they might include fainting spells, known as syncope, or palpitations. A particularly worrying sign is agonal breathing during sleep. Tragically for some, sudden cardiac arrest is the first and only sign. Here's a critical point for management. A high fever is a significant trigger. A fever can actually bring out the Brugada ECG pattern when it wasn't there before. Or worse, it can provoke a life-threatening arrhythmia. This is especially true in children. The diagnostic process follows a clear set of steps. It starts with a standard 12-lead ECG and a detailed family history. If the ECG isn't conclusive but suspicion is high, a drug challenge test using a sodium channel blocker might be done in a controlled hospital setting. Genetic testing can confirm a mutation, and an electrophysiology study, or EPS, may be used to help determine the patient's risk level. Once the diagnosis is confirmed, what's next? Let's turn to treatment and prevention. The single most important goal here is preventing sudden cardiac death. This leads us to the central question. What is the most effective way to protect a high-risk patient from a fatal event? Right now, the only therapy proven to prevent sudden death in these patients is the implantable cardioverter defibrillator, or ICD. This is a small device that monitors the heart's rhythm and can deliver an electrical shock to restore a normal heartbeat if a dangerous arrhythmia occurs. The indications for an ICD are specific. It's recommended for anyone who has already survived a cardiac arrest. It's also indicated for patients who've had syncope that's linked to an arrhythmia, or for asymptomatic patients who are found to be at high risk after an electrophysiology study. But management isn't just about the device. Patient education is absolutely essential. The focus is on strictly avoiding known triggers. That means treating any fever aggressively and right away, staying away from a specific list of medications, and avoiding excessive alcohol consumption. All right, let's bring it all together and quickly summarize the most important management points for Brugada syndrome. So to recap, Brugada syndrome is a genetic electrical heart disorder. Its main risk is sudden cardiac death. The key sign is the type 1 ECG pattern. It's usually inherited in an autosomal dominant fashion and often caused by mutations in the STN5A gene. The primary treatment for high-risk individuals is an ICD, and a huge part of management is avoiding triggers like fever and certain medications.
And this all leaves us with a lingering, important question for clinical practice. Considering the ECG findings can come and go and that so many carriers have no symptoms, how can we improve our screening protocols to find these at-risk individuals before they have a major cardiac event?